Good morning, Hungary. How is everyone? Uh, I have a message uh, that I take from the beautiful people, the welcoming people of the United States of America. I have a message for the people of Hungary. And then I have a message for some others that uh, aren't rooting for our success. But I want to first say uh, what an honor it is to be back again here in Hungary with Prime Minister Orban. Thank you, sir, for your leadership, for your hospitality. Uh, thank you for coming to Dallas. Uh, that was pretty spectacular. A sitting head of state. <laughs> A sitting head of state coming to the great state of Texas and uh, telling it like it is. You know, if uh, Prime Minister Orban ever decides, and he never will, to, uh, to run for office, I think he could become the governor of Texas, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. And to the other prime ministers here, you honor us with your presence. To um, the congressmen who are here, thanks for making the long trip, Congressman Gosar and Congressman Moore. Uh, to the many Americans who made the trip, thanks for joining us. Um, this is being telecast on our website in America. And I think it's important that we let the people of Hungary and the people of Europe, so many here assembled, so many leaders, so many members of the European Parliament know that um, we're in a tricky situation in America. We um, find ourselves, obviously, uh, with a lot of challenges, economic challenges, cultural challenges. The problem when America is not on the right path is that we don't just screw up our own country, we try to screw up a lot of other countries. And the extent to which America is making your life more difficult, is making energy prices harder to manage and higher, trying to tell you how you should raise your children, trying to tell you that your faith is an old-fashioned patrimony, trying to tell you that you have to put away the old clothes and put on new clothes. The extent to which we do that through financial bribes and constant attacks through the media, I just want you to know that for the Americans here at CPAC Hungary, that those messages don't represent the heart and soul of the American people. The American people know their history. And we were talking to the Prime Minister uh, before we started. The American people know their history. Despite the fact that statues are being removed, that books are being burned, that kids, our kids are being propagandized and brainwashed to believe what is not true is true, despite all of this stuff you read, this cultural revolution that's going on in America, the American people understand what God's idea was of America. They haven't lost that idea. That America would be, as the Bible says, and as Ronald Reagan reiterated, the shining city on the hill, right? Or as Donald Trump said, this cherished place that yes had borders and yes had walls and yes had rules, but those walls had big doors. And that country would be helping people that want to build and grow civilization. And the American people understand that America was created and would only succeed if its people held on to religion and held on to those decent principles that the people who established our country espoused in our founding documents and throughout 200 years of existence. And we understand that uh, our time could be short as a world power if we continue to knock out the pylons, the pylons and the foundations that keep our civilization free and strong. We can't survive without the foundations. And the left and George Soros and these globalists are trying to do everything they can to destroy those foundations. But just like we've seen in our history so many times, 
There are freedom fighters in America who are saying no, who are saying you cannot destroy my child, who's saying I won't turn my child over to you to tell them that God had it wrong when he picked their gender. We won't allow you to dictate to our young women and tell them that it would be better if they uh, chose abortion over life. We won't allow these people to come into our society and try to demonize the idea of entrepreneurship and building companies and making profits and hiring people and growing a business. Because as we've known throughout our history and a great former American president said, the business of America is business. America can't survive if there is a growing hostility towards those people who are investing in our economy. And as Margaret Thatcher said, eventually socialists run out of spending other people's money. And that is the great danger we have in America as government spending uh, gets further and further out of control. So to the Hungarian people, please understand that I understand that America and her leadership, specifically President Biden, um, seems to be on an all-out attack on the foundations of what you believe. But don't take it personally, because those of us who are Americans feel equally attacked by these very same people. And the great thing about our system is that an election is always very near into the future, right? It's right around the corner. And we promise you, help is on the way. So I was, I was talking to the great chairman of the center here, Miklos Santos. Miklos, thank you so much for having us back in Hungary. We were sharing about the attacks of CPAC last year. And uh, Miklos and his ABLE team decided that um, they would determine who a journalist was. They would determine who a responsible member of the media was. As you remember, this was quite revolutionary for the Americans. We were like, in America, a journalist tells you when they're a journalist, and then you treat them like a journalist. And then they kick you in the shins, and they kick you other places, and then you just have to deal with it. Uh, we learned in Hungary that journalists should... Uh, uh, ascribe to a certain set of rules. They should be fair. They should write the truth. They should say both sides. And, uh, and so uh, as we were determining our media rules in America, we decided that we would go Hungarian and decide that we would determine who was a fair journalist and who wasn't a fair journalist. And last year, I encountered some of these members of the European media out there on your sidewalk. And what I love about the European journalists is to your face they call you, you know, Nazis, fascists, racists, homophobes, Islamophobes, all these words. And then like an hour later they get exhausted and they're at the bar down the street and then they're all drinking together. So like their bursts of anger don't last that long so you can survive. And, the, uh, and they said to me, how come CPAC won't talk to you, won't talk to us? And I said, well... I'm talking to you. And they said, who are you? I was like, well, I'm the chairman of CPAC, and I'm talking to you. What are your questions? And eventually they were exhausted of this kind of diatribe of hate. And so I've learned a lesson from the Hungarians, and I've learned a lesson from Prime Minister Orban and from Miklos and from the many friends we've made throughout these CPACs overseas. And I know Eduardo Verastegui is here from CPAC Mexico. I know Jay Aiba is here from CPAC Japan. And the message is this, and I want all the Americans to hear this who, when they wake up in a few hours, uh, I want them to hear this message. And I want the people who feel alone to hear this message. And I want the people who feel forgotten to hear this message. And I want the people who don't get invited to Davos to hear this message. And I want the people who don't get invited uh, to see premieres in Hollywood to hear this message. And I want the people who don't get invited to all the international confabs in Brussels or Berlin or Paris to hear this message. We will persevere. We will survive. We will not stop fighting. We will not allow you to take over the minds of our children. We will not allow you to corrupt our elections. We will not allow you to corrupt our schools. We will not allow you to throw us all in prison. Yes, you'll get away with throwing some in prison. But when you throw the some in prison for corrupt means, the rest of us will rise up and hire the lawyers and make the demands to make sure that those people come back out of prison. 
We will not let you destroy civilization. They will, we will not allow you to say that when we defend civilization that there's something racist about that or something hateful about that. And the final thing we will not allow you to do is we will not allow you to separate us from the plan that was written in the heavens thousands of years ago for each and every one of our lives to be on the earth at this moment standing up for what is true. We will not allow you to stop us. And no matter what you say about us, no matter how you try to harm us, you know what conservative believes that they want to win at the ballot box, they want to win the debate, and they want to win the election, but since we believe in heaven and hell, we believe that even the enemy, their political enemy, you all live forever. Everyone lives forever. The leftist, not the liberal, but the leftist, the hardcore Marxist, they want to destroy everything about you. They not only want to win the argument and steal the election and lie about you in the media, they want to destroy and crush your soul. The great thing is, is that our soul, right, has someone very big standing behind it. And it isn't going to work. And we are going to win. And when you feel depressed, and when you feel low, and when you feel like uh, your back is against the wall, your foot is on the edge of the cliff, that there is no hope, we will have a reservoir of hope. We will stand up for each other, and we will get the job done. I want to say thank you to the people of Hungary for this wonderful tradition of having CPAC here in Budapest. It's our honor to be with you. I want to praise the policies of standing up for the rights of children, for the growth of families, for the pushback against the globalists, for the resilience to stand up against those in America who just don't like what you stand for. And I want to tell you that you have wonderful millions and millions of American allies who are standing with you. So thank you for your good work. God bless you all, and thank you very much. Thank you.